Uh, my name is Greg Conley. I am the co-founder and CEO of Trifecta. Uh, Trifecta is now the largest all-organic meal delivery service in the country. We ship hundreds of thousands of vacuum-sealed uh, pre-cooked meals uh, to customers in all 50 states. So imagine, uh, I'm sure you guys have seen box services in the past like Blue Apron or HelloFresh where they ship you uh, ingredients that you then cook at home. Uh, we're kind of the next generation beyond that where we ship you fully cooked meals or food items that you would get in the grocery store like at the deli uh, and you don't actually have to cook them. You can just take them out, uh, you know, eat them directly or reheat them quickly. Um, so the vision behind the company is to completely reimagine how people eat. Uh, we have taken a five-step food supply chain and compressed it down to three steps. And what I mean by that is traditionally uh, for you guys to go down to Whole Foods or you know Rayleigh's, uh, you would buy something that went from the farmer to the co-packer, then to a distributor like UNFI or Cisco, uh, then to a retailer like Whole Foods or Rayleigh's, and then finally you guys as the consumers you know, buy the food item and take it home and cook it. We compress that to three stages where it goes from the farmer, rancher, fisherman uh, to the co-packer who is us and then we ship directly to the consumer via FedEx nationwide. Uh, we're delivering 100% organic meals so we are way over on the whole food side of the fence. And then you guys can see some uh, bulk food items here so you know, maybe a couple pounds of salmon, a couple pounds of chicken, uh, brown rice, etc. The problem. What is the problem we are solving at Trifecta? Uh, America has a massive chronic health uh, crisis going on right now. I'm sure you guys have heard the news, uh, obesity epidemic, et cetera. We're at the point where 70% of the deaths in the United States come from chronic disease. 70% of the people dying. It is a staggering statistic. Uh, Medicare alone is spending $320 billion a year on type two diabetes care by itself. Why do we have so much trouble eating healthy? Why are things so different than they were in the 1950s? Uh, we've looked really deep at the data, specifically a lot of the Harvard meta-analysis studies on why we're currently going through this public health crisis, and it's time. We, most of us are in dual earner households at this point. Uh, me personally, my, my wife is an emergency physician at Kaiser South Sacramento. Uh, it's, you know, like I said, it's not the 1950s. She's not staying at home cooking three meals a day for us. Healthy eating is hard. It is hard to stick to. Uh, most of us eat out all the time and spend an incredible amount of money doing so uh, just because we don't have time to cook for ourselves. The US is one of the hardest working countries on the planet. Our per capita productivity is huge uh, and we have no maximum work week laws. Uh, you know, with the idea behind a million cups, I'm sure a lot of you work 80 plus hours a week. What is the target market we're going after? So we're targeting, we're focusing on the United States to start, but we're targeting the Venn intersection of people who are overweight or obese, so that's about 72% of adult males and 68% of adult females at this point. Uh, people with earnings power of 75,000 or more, uh, so decent size earning power in the household, which is about 102 million Americans. And then Americans that need more time, people that are working more than 50 hours a week, which is four in 10 of us. That Venn intersection of those three huge groups in the US is about 40 million Americans. Uh, if we can even pick up a million of them, we are a $9.6 billion a year company, the size of Uber in 2015. Even 100,000 of them, and we're a unicorn. We're at about 1.45 billion at 100,000 people. So we're talking 1 18th of Sacramento. So how does Trifecta work? It's about as dead simple a business model as you can get. Uh, you go online, you choose the food items you want, whether it's fully prepared meals or individual food items. We deliver it to your house via FedEx in a refrigerated case. You eat the food. It's literally that simple. Most of our customers order a week's worth of food online at a time, and we deliver it directly <coughs> to their door, whether they're in Alaska, Miami, New York, uh, or Los Angeles. Um, the main thing to focus on in terms of the solution though is not only are we selling food, we're selling time, which is one of the most valuable commodities you can buy these days. Oops, 
alluded to right here. So how does the revenue model work? Uh, we work on a subscription model similar to companies like Blue Apron or HelloFresh where people go online, they order usually a week's worth of food, sometimes where people order every two weeks or once a month, uh, and we ship the food directly to their door. Because it's a subscription model, it's resulted in exponential growth for the company. Uh, metrics you guys will probably care about, because we operate entirely through uh, influencer affiliate marketing, our customer acquisition cost, or CAC, is $16.91, so incredibly low. Uh, our monthly customer value for our B2C customers, me selling to people like you guys, uh, is about $683. So we get about a 50x from what it costs for us to get a customer to what we actually make gross sales on that customer monthly. Um, we also have introduced uh, B2B revenue streams now. A uh, good example is Six Pack Bags. Uh, they are an Inc. 500 company multiple years in a row. They make purses, briefcases, duffel bags, etc. and they come with these little refrigerated cases inside of them so you can take your laptop and various other things with you along with some food for the day. Uh, they're doing about 25 million a year in sales and they now sell six pack meals powered by Trifecta. So I'm sure you guys can imagine the thousands of different B2B options that we potentially have. People like Rayleigh's who obviously don't have the capability to ship nationwide but we can white label Rayleigh's meals and Rayleigh's food items and allow them to expand their e-commerce platform uh, to all 50 states. We're targeting a retail price of $10 a meal and our food is the highest quality organic food you can buy on the market. It's you know, gluten-free, dairy-free, soy-free, non-GMO, uh, wild-caught, grass-fed, you, know, you name it. In almost all cases we also buy animal welfare level 5, which you know, means the animals are living on the same farm their entire life, uh, you know, they live a generally good life. Um, traction, which I'm sure is the main thing most people will care about, uh, since our launch just a year and a half ago, uh, sales are up over 15,000% month over month. Uh, from $2,360 uh, our first month uh, to about $400,000 last month. In the time we've been in business, we've sold $3.75 million worth of food thus far. Uh, a few other metrics up here. This is just a screenshot from the back end of our website. Uh, we've s uh, sold about 22,000 orders as of the end of February uh, across about 85,000 items. Um, and obviously, our you know average monthly gross is continuing to climb uh, as we grow. Oops. Okay. This thing does a little double click thing. There we go. Uh, so marketing and sales, how are we bootstrapping this business to grow it so incredibly quickly? Uh, we use about as 2017 uh, marketing platform as you can possibly get. We use social media influencers that we turn into affiliate marketers for us. So across all the celebrity athletes, sports leagues, etc. that we work with, uh, we can reach at any one time about 15 million people. Um, and essentially we turn all these celebrity athletes, whether they're NBA players, bodybuilders, NFL players, UFC fighters. Uh, we just recently had Uriah Faber, who's right here in Sacramento, uh, join the team as an investor. Uh, these people are able to very rapidly spread the word for us in a extremely social media focused marketing environment. And because we've made them affiliates, we pay them a small commission on people that order from them and of course we allow them to monetize these huge fan bases. So you, you know, take someone like Michael Phelps, he has 15 million uh, Instagram followers, but is he able to turn those into money? And we allow them uh, to put two and two together there and do it with a product they can absolutely stand behind. It's Whole Foods, it you know, fits perfectly with their athlete persona. Uh, we've now grown to the point where we've started directly partnering with leagues. So we recently signed a four-year contract uh, with Team USA, which is the US Olympic team. Uh, we went up through the national governing bodies as opposed to down through the International uh, Olympic Committee, the IOC, which is the much more expensive way to do it. I'll use USA Weightlifting as an example of how we were able to pull this off without spending a ton of money. Uh, we reached out to the CEO of the national governing body of USA Weightlifting and they are spending about $15 a meal to feed their athletes. They have these what they call VIC dollars, which are uh, you know, donor or government dollars to take care of the U.S. Olympians. We came in and said, we'll give you 
uh, food for the Olympians at $8 a meal. We make about 20% profit on that. And for them, across the four-year partnership for that single national governing body for USA Weightlifting, they save about $700,000 across the four-year contract. So we're now a co-title sponsor with Nike of the U.S. Olympic team. Uh, other huge ones, we just recently signed CrossFit, so we're now going to be a title sponsor of the CrossFit Games. Uh, with the help of Uriah, we've started conversations with the UFC. Uh, we've got about 95 or 96 uh, celebrity athletes on board right now, uh, sp spanning pretty much every sport you guys can think of. Um, background on our team, uh, me, Greg Conley over there on the left, uh, I always love the the glasses in front of a whiteboard picture always makes you look smart up there. Uh, <laughs> so, veteran entrepreneur, uh, I've started five businesses, uh, sold two of them. Uh, probably the largest was a company called Smart Turn. We were funded by uh, NEA and Emergence Capital uh, out in San Francisco. Uh, come from the software industry, and uh, ultimately, that company that I was referencing, we worked a lot uh, in the supply chain behind the scenes at uh, food distributors, beverage contract packagers, etc. And I saw all of the morbid shit going into the food we all eat every day. So that was the big impetus behind me uh, launching Trifecta. I feel like we can kill a major problem, which is uh, the public health crisis we're facing, save the government literally hundreds of billions of dollars in the process, uh, and do it all through capitalism so it's self-sustaining. Um, been doing entrepreneurship for quite some time now. I'm also a writer for Entrepreneur Magazine. Uh, I've recently actually jumped ship to uh, Inc. Magazine, so I need to update that slide. Uh, but brought my sister uh, into the business uh, shortly after I started it. She was a channel manager uh, for PayPal and Square um, and was also part of uh, my buddy Sam Osmond's company, uh, Demand Force, that was acquired in 2012 by Intuit for $424 million. Uh, Jason Pierre, third key person up here, he's a veteran marketing and media manager. Uh, man can do anything with video and graphics and is very familiar with uh, marketing in a you know, 2017 social media environment. Uh, financial projections, uh, so you know, top line we wanted to beat over 3 million in the first 16 months, which we did. Uh, this year, as we start to bring major partners on live, we're forecasting 25 to 40 million in sales in 2017. Uh, you know, 25 on the conservative end, 40 million if I, everything serendipitously goes perfectly. Our monthly run rate right now is, is almost 400,000 as of last month, uh, and we're estimating a million a month by uh, May of 2017. One minute. Our gross profit margin is now, uh, it's actually higher than this now, we've got it up to 30% and it continues to climb uh, as we increase our economies of scale. So we're able to crush the price with FedEx, we're at about a 73% reduction on their retail shipping uh, and at the same time, you know, buying more scale which reduces our cost per meal and increases our growth, gross profit margin. We've got production capacity at our current facility up to about 18.5 million a month, so I haven't forecast past. Uh, 2018, where we're hoping to hit the, the quarter billion mark, which would put us at half the growth rate of Blue Apron, so we think it's it's reasonable. Uh, competition. We've got a lot of people in the space. Uh, several, like Blue Apron and HelloFresh, are ingredient shippers. Uh, there's a number of local players, uh, you know, over on the economy side that only ship to gyms and other things along those lines. Uh, now that we've scaled nationwide, we are launching our wholesale program, which should be able to start. Uh, eliminating competition at the hyper-regional level uh, throughout the country, uh, and I'll go relatively quickly through that. Uh, I, I know, I'm pretty sure you guys don't do race stuff for this, but currently, you know, just presented at SAC Angels last night. Uh, you know, we've presented to Moneta, a number of the VCs in the area that we're pretty far along the due diligence on. We're raising seven million at a 21 million pre-money uh, to expand the team essentially. Uh, comparables, I'll throw up there: Blue Apron, 36 months. Five rounds, 193 million raised. Most recent round at a two billion pre-money. Um, Hello Fresh, very similar, uh, also in the ingredients delivery space. Uh, 48 months across five rounds for 275 million, and now a 2.75 billion pre-money. Uh, so comparables that have exploded very rapidly. Uh, we just want to be the food platform that allows various people to, uh, you know, sell products, etc., and then we sell. The, you know, the food itself, the kind of core grocery store staple item. Um, so 
very simple business model to understand. We are just applying e-commerce uh, to food. It's something Amazon has traditionally struggled with uh, because they still have a lot of distribution centers uh, in the supply chain, which uh, you know makes them a, a four four stage model as opposed to three like us. And that's it. Good. Relatively close. To it. Same question to you. How can we support you as a community? Um, easy ones. So uh, we've gotten. We just moved from uh, Los Angeles in July, um, and we've gotten a tremendous amount of support in Sacramento from, you know, the Haney Biz team to, uh, the, you know, Barry over at uh, Greater Sacramento. Uh, things that if any of you have potential intros on, we're you know looking to work with schools, uh, various other organizations that would be a fantastic fit for. Uh, you know, food, for example, City of Sacramento, they're looking to consolidate all the school lunches into one centralized kitchen. <clears throat> Things like that are absolutely fantastic for us. Those type of accounts are like pouring jet fuel on the bonfire for us. Uh, the other thing you guys can help with is poke holes in the business. Tell me things that uh, you think we're going to trip on. Uh, would love to hear, if, you know, any, anything you guys think we should focus on in the short term. Thank you. <coughs> Got a question? No. Sure. Sorry. Um, how many different food items do you offer? Uh, right now we've got about 160 SKUs on the food side and we've opened up a market as well that is, has started selling additional things like meal management bags, condiments, various other things. So about 200 items in total right now. Did you say the average family spends 683? 683 a month. A month? Yeah. Wow. So how does that compare to the average grocery bill? I haven't looked at that. Uh, we, we talked to one of the uh, groups we were in, we talked a bunch of people into giving us their bank statements and uh, people averaged out to about $756 a month. That is one of the biggest problems we have right now is we give people their whole month grocery bill uh, all in one shot. So, you know, a lot of people spend two, three hundred dollars a month with us. Uh, if you've got a family of four, you may be spending, you know, a thousand bucks a month. I bet if I went around this room and asked each of you exactly how much you spend on food every month, you would go, oh, I go to Costco, two hundred. Uh, I eat out about fifteen, twenty times, fifteen dollars. Nobody would know. It would be very difficult for anybody in this room to tell me exactly how much you spend on food, myself included. Uh, so that's a big problem that we're trying to solve. Is quantifying for people how much they spend on food every month so we comparably seem less expensive because on a la carte we can do meals for about four to seven dollars a meal which is you know mcdonald's prices is there that uh there will be we are uh yeah we're in uh, it, it obviously the whole website is mobile optimized so it works perfectly on your phone uh, resizes everything um, but we are uh, potentially our lead developer that we're hiring owns uh, one of the biggest crossfit fitness apps yeah, and we're in discussion with him and his biggest investor to just, uh, you know, essentially give them some stock and acquire the app as well with him. Um, so very soon. Quick question. Yeah. So obviously you guys have definitely fit your, your groove here and you're rolling really quick. I guess my question is because you have a, a lot of competitors that are slightly different, but what's to stop them from adapting this model? Because really the, the biggest differentiators are it's organic, it's affordable. Those are the two biggest things, right? It, it's delivered to your doorstep, and there's people that are doing that, but maybe not as effective or efficient and organic, but what's to stop Amazon Fresh from figuring it out because they have your right, or Blue Apron or whoever else to, to buy into this similar model? Uh, sure, so Blue Apron, um, uh, essentially there's a gold rush going on in this space. Right. Uh, suddenly food people are comfortable enough with Amazon Prime at this point where they're willing to buy food online. And that is like, food is, you know, everybody's predicting it to be the next big e-commerce boom. Uh, since it's such a massive market. Uh, so long story short, there isn't anything. Uh, we have had conversations with Amazon. They really struggle doing food. Uh, we may potentially work directly with them. Uh, they've had us deliver to fridges, within, which then they try and re-deliver. Uh, long story short, we have to do a drop shipping model with somebody like Amazon, which we, we haven't fully worked out with them yet. So it might be like a partnership with another existing company that has large resources that can buy into it or just buy it. Buy yes. Yeah, so someone like Blue Apron, Blue Apron's doing about 50 million a month now, so they're at about 600 million a year in sales. Um, and they've got, you, you've got to realize though that even that, which sounds like a lot of money to us, is pennies compared to groceries. So Rayleigh's right here in our backyard does about 3 billion a year. 
three billion just with Rayleigh's just in Sacramento. People like Whole Foods, they did about 19 billion last year. Grocery itself was over 600 billion, uh, and food in general was slightly north of five trillion in the United States. So it's a, a massive addressable market, and we're really playing a move fast strategy where we're trying to become the you know, the Nike of the meal prep space. I want to go around and sign multi-year agreements with a bunch of leagues, a lot of the top celebrity athletes who've already had. Exactly. So, you know, us signing four years with the Olympics, we are hoping that we can outlast everybody uh, with these multi-year partnerships and get to the point where we're doing at least a billion a year and, you know, either get acquired, uh, you know, by one of the major food companies or, uh, you know, be a massive private company like Blue Apron. Great job. So, um, how many kitchens do you have set up and are they regional because people may have different taste, food preferences by which region they are from? Somebody here might want red potatoes, somebody in Louisiana might want grits. Mm -hmm. um, and to have one executive chef that can anticipate all that might be unrealistic. So what are your plans to address the fickleness of the end user? Sure, it's a great question and they are fickle. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you'd be amazed how, how picky people are when it comes to their food. Uh, so, it, it, we do ship out of one centralized kitchen right now. Um, we don't actually own the kitchen, so we control uh, the inputs, so we work directly with the farmers, ranchers, fishermen, etc., sourcing the stuff. We control the master recipes, so, you know, what food is getting made, for what diet types, you know, vegan, paleo, you know, etc. Uh, and then we control, obviously, the customer interface. So we want to operate more like the Uber or the Alibaba or, you know, Airbnb. We want to be the platform for food as opposed to uh, just directly you know trying to control the, the production of the food itself uh, right now with all the cart line uh, that food is is kind of our one size fits all for everybody type right. of food uh, it's very lightly seasoned so you can put Cajun sauce on it you know she can put salt uh, you know etc cetera, etc cetera. everybody can you know kind of pick and choose and customize it however they like uh, the menus themselves for the meal plans, which are a whole different division of the company, right. uh, are on rotating menus where you can put preferences. So, you know, if you absolutely love curry but hate mushrooms, you know, you can tell us those things and we'll send you uh, meals that specifically fit what you're looking for in particular. Cool. Pretty yeah, nice. but we do ship out of one kitchen to all 50 states and there's some pretty advanced stuff on that side. Sure. Uh, one comment, one question. Sure. The comment is, I think this is one of the most comprehensive presentations that um, that I've seen at one million pubs with regard to references to market, technology, team, finance, and some referential valuation metrics. Thank so, you. So, so good job on that. Appreciate uh, it. The question that I have is there's a lot of discussions with regard to financial aspects of the business, top line revenue and gross profits. Mm -hmm. Top line revenue was 400000 last month. What, what were net profits? What, what are you net rate cash flow dollars right now? And what yes. are net profits with? Yes, we're cash flow positive, and the main reason we're raising capital is we, you know, we're shooting for market domination. We we want to be the one, the biggest, the blue apron of the fully prepared meal space. So that is why we're raising capital. Uh, net profit last month is you know was somewhere around thirty thousand dollars, give or take, of course, which we, you know, subsequently mostly plow back into the business. Um, you know, we are paying all of our employees at the West Sac office. You know, salaries. We've got nine employees at that location, and. You know, obviously, cost we get sold goes, you know, to the suppliers and kitchen on on the rest of it for the, the gross profit side of the fence. So we are cash flow positive. Um, net sales is not, uh, or uh, net revenue is not, you know, amazing at this point. So we don't focus, you know, too terribly much on, on it in the pitch. But we are cash flow positive. Yes. Uh, when did you start shipping the food? A uh, year and a half ago. So August, we took the website live. First version was coded by yours truly, <laughs> and then uh, this is a much improved version that our uh, marketing firm, John McNeil Studios, put together for us. But August of 2015, we shipped our our first shipments, and we knew we were onto something because we took the website live, had not advertised anything yet, and people started ordering. So we were like, "How the hell are they finding us?" But um, but yeah, it's it's uh, it's been kind of a whirlwind so since it's the initial it's financement finance is coming from the uh, yes. So I put in fifty thousand myself. My sister Liz uh, put in fifty thousand, and an investor of mine from a previous company got wind that we were, you know, launching another company and 
demanded that uh, he let <laughs> he let uh, us let him invest, uh, you know, prior to us doing a, a round. And so those are our only three investors, but we did just launch our Series A, and we've got reservations for at least a half million at this point. And if Moneta, if, you know, various other people tip, uh, we should be able to raise the seven million. Last so, um, as a as a member of the Sacramento startup community, <coughs> we're super excited that you guys decided to relocate to Sacramento. I was wondering uh, what were some of the factors that influenced you to move your business to Sacramento? Sure. So a few big ones. Uh, I grew up here uh, in a small town called Loomis. Uh, I think it's part of it's been renamed to Granite Bay now, where I, I used to live. Uh, but having lived here for 17 years, uh, lived in you know San Francisco for about 10 and, and Los Angeles for about seven, um, and a number of factors. Uh, one, we source most of our produce, most of our suppliers are in the Central Valley. Sacramento is the farm, to, undoubtedly the farm to fork capital of the world, um, and most of the produce and, and uh, various other things we're sourcing is coming from the Central Valley. So it lets us be a lot closer to our suppliers, which we really want to highlight. We're going to be able to do something that probably none of you have experienced outside of a farmer's market, uh, which is show you the grower on their farm growing the carrots which you subsequently eat the next week in the meals that come to your house. Uh, that's something with the extended supply chain of the grocery store that most people can never see. Uh, and we wanted to be you know, right here in Sacramento directly working with, uh, you know, with our suppliers on that side of the fence uh, because we are very definition of farm to fork. The other reasons were just personal. My parents are long retired and live in uh, Davis and uh, my wife's dad also retired, lives in Davis as well and we've Put off having kids for as long as genetically possible at this point. So, <laughs> so um, be good to be around grandparents when that happens. Other questions? Yeah, one more quick question. So you mentioned before that it's about a sixteen dollar cost per acquisition for a customer, right? Yes. And you're using um, social influencers for affiliate marketing. Are you guys looking at alternative methods for digital advertising that are a lot more effective than a sixteen dollar? Um, we, we do do other things, uh, you know, easy ones are like remarketing. We've got about a 18x ROAS return on ad spend on remarketing that we do through a, a platform called Steelhouse. Uh, as we raise capital, you know, there's a number of different additional marketing things we'll, you know, we'll do via more traditional channels. But uh, right now, so we can have the best possible pitch for investors, you know, I want to have really big top line sales and not be losing a bunch of money every month, you know, which is kind of the, the key to making the, the you know, most attractive pitch on the uh, entrepreneur side of the fence. So yes, we'll absolutely do Facebook ads, various other things to you know, scale the business but considerably faster as we go live. Um, and then other things like you know, creating a lot of content with a lot of these celebrity athletes. I mean, we have the people that everybody looks at and goes, oh wow, you know, look at the great six pack on, you know, Uriah Faber, you know, type thing. How do I look like him? And he says, buy this food, <laughs> you know, type thing. And we, we really need to create a lot of that content, uh, essentially, so. All right, well. Yeah, thank we you guys for having me out. Really appreciate it.